Hi, Sarita. Welcome to another episode of Brand India Interviews. And I welcome you this evening. Uh, so let's start. Uh, like say, from a BPA executive and then working with uh, PNG or other Procter & Gamble, how did you become an entrepreneur? Can you uh, probably say a little bit about your journey as an entrepreneur? Thank you, Annie. It's actually a very good question. Actually, I come from a background of uh, government employees. My father and mother both worked in government, government service. And uh, being an entrepreneur it was a nightmare for me. Uh, I actually didn't think of that. And uh, as a girl from a, a village, from a middle class family, I also started my studies. And then after studies, I joined in a private organization. And after that, I moved to Bangalore. And there I worked in a BPO just to survive there in Bangalore. Then. Uh, the biggest turning point in my, my life happened there in Bangalore. Uh, actually, I got the job in Procter & Gamble and I started working there. Procter & Gamble is a company like uh, they value more in employees' productivity. They give more training, staff training to the employees. So I, have, I also got an opportunity. And I got many trainings from there, uh, from Procter & Gamble, and I got an opportunity to take staff training as well. So initially, I was a little worried. Actually, a girl from Kerala with a typical Malu accent taking training in the uh, corporate world. It was uh, nearly impossible for me. Then somehow I managed my first training and it went on well. And again, the second month, I got another opportunity for taking uh, for taking the training session. And that was also somehow managed. The third time, I volunteered myself for taking the training. And uh, going on, like I realized that there is some potential inside me of uh, towards the training, so, uh, trainings and all, trainings and teaching and learning. Uh, but uh, it didn't work. I have to work there. And after that, I got married and moved to Dubai. In a couple of ways, I worked there in Dubai also. There, I didn't get any opportunities. And uh, from Dubai, I reached back in India uh, because of some family commitment and all. I didn't get any opportunity to start a business and all. Then finally, I started my boutique. It was my first venture. I started a ladies fashion boutique in 2013. Uh, but that training desire was there inside me. The trainer in me was not very happy, not very satisfied. Then I decided to be a trainer, to certified trainer, and I got trained. Uh, then I got certified as a skilled trainer, soft skill trainer in 2016. And then uh, from 2016, I started taking trainings to many organizations, many kids, many schools going to students, college going students entrepreneurs, ladies, everyone. Uh, then I thought, okay, I'm a freelancer now. I have to start my own venture. Then I started Achievers Training Institute, uh, like especially for uh, ladies, uh, job seekers, and uh, all the employees. Here, uh, we are doing training for all, all the age groups. So this is my journey till now. Uh, now for like adding value to uh, the training journey, I'm learning psychology also. I think it, it will really help me improving uh, my training skills and counseling skills. Okay, so so nice to uh, hear such a, uh, what do you say, open uh, talk about how you became an entrepreneur. So which, which, which part do you like more? Do you like your boutique part more or you like to become a, the trainer side more? Okay, the financial part, uh, boutique part, gives more money but uh, the person the desire in my in inside me the passion inside me the real sarida is more happy about the training field so that is my passion okay so great to hear great to hear that okay yeah. so uh, so tell me more about your uh, learn, more about learners uh, uh, arena uh, your your company uh, how did you start and where is the office and what do you give what kind of training do you give and who is your target audience and how do you go about it okay so my training organization's name is achievers training and consultancy services as the name indicates we provide training service as well as the consultancy services so the main focus our uh, main target audience uh, job seekers and the uh, like aspiring entrepreneurs so we do skill trainings for both for the employees and for the employers. Uh, there are two sets of trainings. For the employer part, uh, we will be giving training to mentor the employees and the team management and the leadership qualities and employer record. 
and for the employees we equip them with uh, how to manage within manage interview how to manage the work about how the team management skills and the goal setting skills everything and the communication skills all the aspects uh, like uh, for the students and for the college going students we do more set of uh, career oriented trainings uh, so for the for the development of their career and uh, uh, goal setting kind of thing and uh, communication skills everything and talking about achievers uh, we more we are now more focusing on trainings and our our aim is to skill more employees to equip with all their skill sets to manage their uh, like manage their job with all the efficiency all the potential uh, skills uh, what they needed in that uh, job uh, these are all about the uh, trainings that, that that we are following in achievers Okay, so uh, do you have a regular space where 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 people can come and take trainings or uh, all these trainings online? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, Actually, okay. uh, we our office is in Kalamashiri in Kochi, uh, but we do not have a training hall right now. So we are looking for a training hall. And uh, actually, now now what we do is online training, and uh, wherever we require, like with the college or the institution, so wherever uh, they require the training, we will go there personally and do training there in their hall. And uh, in near future, we'll be having our own training for the talking for the best. Okay, so for this uh, this training uh, business that you do, do you have any like have you taken up any kind of certifications, extra certifications, or uh, have you been trained by somebody? Uh, how how was your uh, journey in that? Okay, in the soft skills training, I'm certified from Junior Chamber of India. Uh, I'm a certified trainer from Junior Chamber of India and the fraternity of Indian trainers. So I got certified from both uh, this hospital training thing, and uh, as I said earlier, I'm now uh, pursuing the psychology course, so counseling psychology. So uh, after the certification, I will be more confident to take counseling as well, the psychology part as well. So again, uh, uh, what kind of marketing strategy do you employ? How do you market your uh, training sessions or? Uh, or your body or whichever whichever is like you know, important for you okay also is a small organization so uh, whatever strategies we follow is a more economical way uh, so currently word of mouth is the most efficient and uh, most used to marketing strategies and uh, i use my testimonials so the testimonials we get from the audience i use it as the marketing uh, marketing tool and uh, recently we started digital marketing and social media marketing also Uh, so these are the ways of marketing, uh, mostly word of mouth. Okay. So again, uh, when I uh, look into your training side, uh, whom do you train? Like you know, uh, can any organization approach you? Government agencies approach you? Uh, how do you how do you approach or how do you get customers? Who are your customers now? Okay. Uh, before this pandemic situation, before this COVID period, uh, it was offline. Like all the trainings were offline. And uh, the target audience kind of is mostly colleges, mostly colleges and the schools, high secondary schools where our clients. So for clients, high secondary schools, uh, uh, set of career oriented trainings and the goal setting trainings they are looking for actually the improvement of the their students' career development. So uh, schools, that 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 was their requirement. And for the colleges part. More job oriented kind of, kind of after the course where they should go and what will be the most suitable career for them and uh, what will be the next way after the degree or after the post graduation uh, what will be their next opportunity more skill set of training communication skill grooming and etiquettes and the body language all this will be applicable there and coming to the employees training sales and marketing team management and the target how to attain uh, like sales targets. these are the uh, topics we cover with employees uh, so depend upon the clients clients requirements we have customized set of trainings so depends upon the clients requirements of what they demand we are equipped with the all set of trainers we have uh, we have a group of trainers to train all these set of my it is a marketing training or a sales training or a career training or employees uh, training whatever it may be we have uh, more skill people with our organization So uh, you mean to say you are a group of people are doing yes. this? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, so, uh, what can you say is some of the or make or break uh, uh, mo- moments in your career? Okay, that's a good question. Actually, uh, I got an opportunity in two thousand seventeen, I believe, 
uh, and I got an opportunity to train more than 400 people uh, continuously for three hours without any break. <laughs> yeah, it was really a big achievement for me and uh, uh, that brought me very, very good opportunity in the field of training. I got many skill training workshop after that. So it was a okay. great moment. <laughs> So in your training sessions, which is actually your favorite subject? Like, you know, uh, like, uh, is okay. it motivation or is it uh, communication or is it uh, goal setting? Which is your favorite subject? Yes. Or uh, which is uh, your strong point? Strong point. So uh, number of trainings, if I count the number of trainings I handle, goal setting is the most comfortable and uh, most confident subject for me. Uh, I train more in that subject. Uh, not only the uh, part of goal setting with short analysis and all. Okay, so, uh, like uh, once you give a training to somebody, has someone ever come back and said, "Okay, uh, we've implemented it, and this is how we felt about it"? Have you got any kind of comments like that? Yes, yes, yes. There, there are many. There are many incidents. So, so if I, if I can mention an event, so once I was taking training for a group of ladies. So I was just casually saying about the fruits they are wasting in their uh, garden. So one of uh, one of the ladies uh, after after I think few weeks, two or three weeks, uh, she called me and informed me that she started a business of squash and jam with using that fruit. So that fruits uh, they they have not used that all. So after the training, they got an insight to use the trainer that fruits they are wasting so far, and uh, they started a new business. And I was very happy and satisfied by <laughs> hearing that. It was really actually an award, award for me. Right. Uh, like say, now uh, you've experienced success as a trainer. Did you ever have to turn down any offer or like say, or, or a training session or anything for any particular reason? Yes, of course. Uh, because being a lady, uh, it's like uh, the carrying time, the pregnancy time and all, I, I had to refuse the offers. Uh, purely because of the personal reasons, uh, I I had to uh, like say no to that opportunity. Uh, but no choice at all. <laughs> Great. Uh, according to you, actually, what is the most important thing for progress as an, uh, as an owner or uh, as an uh, entrepreneur? What do you feel is the most important thing? Okay, as an entrepreneur, the ability to take the right decision at the right time, the decision-making power is the most important thing. Whether it is right or wrong, the right time, the decision is the most important part as an entrepreneur to grow or reach success. Uh, so what do you actually look for in an employee? Since you have a lot of trainers uh, employed with you and other people there, what is it that you look for in a, what is the value added thing that you're looking for in an employee? Actually, the term employee, I don't want to use that term employee. So I consider my core trainers as a team members. So in my team members, I consider dedication and hard, dedication, hard work and commitment. And of course, a teamwork. So we work as a team. So uh, we need the same wavelength in everyone. So we have to think like uh, think likewise and we have to act like likewise. So the teamwork and the dedication, these are the two points I look for in an, um, not an employee, in my teammates. Uh, like, uh, have you experienced any challenge as a as a woman, uh, as an entrepreneur, or was it an easygoing uh, scene for you, as an entrepreneur or as a, somebody who was working in a BPO or probably even in Procter and Gamble also? Okay, uh, not in Procter and Gamble. Procter and Gamble. Uh, so I, I I should say it's a very good employee friendly company. So I never experienced a bad. Thing there in Procter and Gamble, uh, but when I started my career, like my business career, when I started my boutique, the first business, I faced many challenges from the authorities, from the government authorities, from the government uh, the, like officials. So I, uh, because of that reason, I had to like I forcefully I had to uh, like stop many good opportunities that came in my way. Uh, I had to drop that opportunities because of these technical issues from the government side. And uh, another one, as I think, as almost all the employees or uh, entrepreneurs face, lack of uh, financial support. Uh, I'm also facing that challenge. Uh, like almost all, uh, because during the pandemic period, especially, these are the challenges so far I faced. Okay. Uh, when we are talking about uh, gender equality and uh, uh, like inclusivity and everything, 
how do you think uh, like you know uh, having more women in a workforce do you feel it can make a difference or uh, what is your opinion on that yeah, of course it can make a difference actually uh, more women employees means more creative ideas and more experienced women can join the force but force Uh, so of, of course diversity brings in new new ideas and new potential leads and all uh, and uh, it will be a good opportunity for the companies as well if we get the senior senior most of the senior employees for senior women employees and the all all the employees can benefit each other from our, like benefit each other by sharing ideas and experiences so it is really diversity is really very important in every aspect in your uh, in your uh, boutique or even in your uh, training segment do you have any kind of key partnerships uh, that you have formed uh, or are you going alone no in not in boutique and in my training career actually in my family business uh, my i'm the partner of my husband's business uh, no other no no other uh, partners so far but in training business i'm planning to add some other training organizations as well, partners not in financial terms but in idea idea sharing and in opportunity sharing terms we are adding uh, i'm planning to add some more partners in the training business because we can we both can benefit mutually benefit from sharing that so uh, if i ask you about your uh, journey with cimsme uh, uh, what is your opinion and what do you want to talk about it how do you want to uh, express that awesome experience that's the one word i can say because uh, i've got many good opportunities uh, to hear from global leaders especially uh, we have got many 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 global summits and uh, it actually uh, like changed me very well changed me really like anything uh, my perspective my ideologies and uh, my way of working style and my laziness <laughs> everything it's, it was really like uh, uh, an eye opener <laughs> for me and uh, most of all i got good connections good friendship network is a net worth <laughs> we all say so i got good connections you <laughs> through the msme i'm really really happy to be a part of this uh, so how do you like to contribute more to cim msme if i if i may ask that question okay okay being a trainer so i also want to contribute in many ways uh, like uh, by giving training to my teammates Uh, to other women other women entrepreneurs other aspiring entrepreneurs and uh, uh, and the, the company side like from my achiever side we are already focused on community development we are doing many activities for rural women rural women in villages so uh, with the help of amsme i think i can grow further in that way that way also uh, since you talked about your work with rural women uh, can you explain more about it so that uh, we can also understand as to what kind of experiences you had and uh, how probably you can uh, help them in in your work so okay. as i said earlier like uh, one lady called me and started a business uh, in with this course and squash it was in uh, middle of a uh, kudumba street training actually so uh, we take training for self help group uh, it was before pandemic time and due to this pandemic period i'm giving online trainings Uh, and for the uh, community, like for small, small units, small scale units, and all, uh, for uh, self help group, like woman oriented group of group of ten members, group of twelve members in my village. And uh, after this pandemic period is uh, going to settle down, uh, we are planning for a big training series or one week session for uh, uh, in connection with the Kudumba City Youth, uh, merely like uh, for purely for skill development. and for the self enhance enhancement entrepreneur development these are the topics we are planning and uh, on the go we will be adding more topics also so it will be one week uh, interactive workshop for so actually are you uh, part of any government agency or uh, you are like in a contract manner with them uh, like, not currently not too. currently actually before uh, before that uh, we were getting uh, trainings from the government agencies uh, from uh, anganwadis from kudumbasri units uh not now uh, not now really because of this pandemic time i hope for the association after this pandemic period so uh do you have anybody as your role model any women leaders or uh, anybody whom you always see at a pedestal 
Yes, of course. Uh, I consider Mrs. Sutta Murthy, uh, chairperson of Infosys Foundation, as my role model because uh, she's a very good example of work life balance. Uh, she's a business woman. At the same time, she's a good homemaker as well. She takes care of the family well, her kids, and manages her passion also. also. Like, uh, she's a good author. Uh, she wrote many books. And uh, she's a good speaker. <laughs> she's a good motivator also. So she really influenced me uh, in taking this entrepreneurial journey and in my career everywhere. So uh, coming to uh, work-life balance. So how do you balance it? Are you able to balance it or? Uh... Yes, actually it's a dormitory play. <laughs> so we have to, being a lady, we have to manage uh, actually work and uh, family, kids. Uh, everything. Uh, so I think I can, I can manage, but um, I, I cannot say that I'm 100% hundred percent, hundred percent in both the roles. I have to compromise in many things, in family thing and when we working thing also. By but uh, with the proper time management uh, and uh, I always think about priority. What is the priority? And I will keep an eye on the deadlines. So because of that planning and the time management, I somehow managed to run my family very well, my kids' education and my uh, about the business. But I cannot say that I'm 100% involved. Uh, what do you say as your biggest mistake and uh, how did you learn, deal with it and uh, learn to you know overcome it? Okay, uh, but not in this business. I al already said I have a boutique business. Uh, when I started my business, the boutique business in 2013, I made a huge initial investment. So without knowing the market, without know, without doing any market study, I did a very, very big amount of money. Uh, I invested very big amount of money in that business. And later on, I realized that it was a mistake and I ended up with a financial liability as well. Uh, because of uh, infrastructure and the dead investment I made there. But it was uh, that mistake taught me a lesson. And I learned very well from that mistake. And when I started this job, like this business, this Achievers Training Academy, I was very careful in, in investing each, each rupee there in that. I was very careful and I uh, was even, I said that I, we don't have a training hall in now. Because of this aspect, I am not taking a training hall in, in this pandemic period. I'm very careful in investing money. So after that, uh, pandemic will be getting over. Uh, I will be taking a training hall. So that uh, big mistake I did earlier taught me a lesson and I'm very careful now. Uh, how would you actually like to help uh, other women? Uh, uh, like, you know, uh, it could be either be women entrepreneurs, or it could just be anybody uh, who needs help. Or, or rather, uh, if I may add another question to that, how do you how do you plan to give back to the society? As I said earlier, so uh, we are very focused on community development, and uh, uh, my aim is to like equip housewives. For housewives, uh, their uh, like their work is unpaid and uh, it is not counted at all. It's, so there are many housewives inside the house. They have many potential talents inside them and uh, they don't have enough time or they don't have anybody to uh, focus or any, any anybody to point out that you have this talent inside you, you have very potential talent inside you. So I, I do have a desire to uh, equip them or train them uh, to find out their hidden talents inside them and to be self-sufficient in their whatever role it may be, uh, to be self-sufficient or to be to be independent. So that so that is the way I can give back to society. So the tool I have is training. I have in me with me is training. So through the training, proper training and proper uh, counseling and proper idea giving, so I can equip them to be self-sufficient. That is the way I'm looking for uh, to give back to society. So actually, have you formulated any kind of plans for that? Like any, any particular kind of a training? Have you? Do you have anything like that in your mind? So like uh, yes, 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 of course. We have modulized. a module. We, we have a skill training module, and uh, we are a group of four trainers in that. Uh, saying that uh, we have divided uh, each topics to uh, like according to their caliber or their potential, the trainers' potential. In that, the skill training is involved, and the language training is also involved. And uh, they be, they'll be having a motivation session also, uh, so just to like just to get out of all the. Uh, all the ill feelings they have inside them so so they they'll be having some some inhibitions inside them so they will we have a motivation session also end of that we'll be having an entrepreneur session the, the fourth one is entrepreneur session how to market their products what is their idea uh, what uh, what are their ideas and how to uh, that idea 
how to turn that idea into a business. So we have four modules in that. So we are working on it. It's uh, still in the progressing period. It's not completed yet. Actually, uh, by, I think by end of April, uh, we will be coming out with the three modules for the rural women. Not only for the rural women, for the housewives. Okay, so how do you plan to implement it? Like, are you planning to keep it as a regular training sessions and uh, 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 reach to people? Or how do you plan to do that? Do you have any tie-ups with any, any other firms or organizations for that? Okay, actually, keeping in mind this pandemic situation, uh, the, at first, we'll be starting with online training session. And if the situation is okay, so always I like the classroom training, not the online training. So that is more beneficial and effective. So I think if, if the situation is getting over, then we'll be starting the classroom session. And uh, as I said earlier, we have some photo industry and self help group link, uh, the contacts we have. So we'll be working uh, with them, like we'll be contacting them for uh, more uh, like more opportunities or for more participants. So we need more participants for, so they can help out for getting in more participants. That is the way we are planning. You said uh, goal setting is your uh, favorite uh, topic to teach. Uh, like as you are training people, um, which is the uh, which is one of the what do you say most important problems that you find like you know, with people? What is the uh, most common problem that they face for which you need to give them a training? Do you have okay. anything specific uh, for that? Yes, yes. Uh, problems are different from uh, if. If we are giving training to students, kind of plus two students or uh, uh, college going students, they have the fear of uh, like uh, society or fear of expressing themselves. So they don't want to express what they have, they have inside them or they, are, they have a goal or they have a vision inside them. So they are like, they are fearing like the fear of failure. Fear of failure is the biggest thing I've, I've seen in many of the students. So they have the, their desire and they have a goal inside them. But uh, they don't know how to like uh, how to take it forward, or uh, they have a fear of failure. So coming to the entrepreneurship sector, so they are already like they are already into the entrepreneurship, and they are already in uh, like uh, doing some business, and they have already faced many challenges in their field. So like uh, they have many aspects, like financial problems are there, and uh, some other some other issues. They already face many challenges. So taking risk is a very big factor for them so they don't want to take another risk they are already failed somewhere they have already experienced some failures or say some challenges they don't want to take another risk so these are the two set of problems i face one in uh, students and one in employees so not in one in entrepreneurs okay. so you were talking about uh, psychology training or uh, that you've received so how do you think you said that will be uh, helpful for counseling uh, will it also help in your training sessions? Will you be able to, you know, uh, give an extra edge for your training sessions because of that? Yes, yes, of course. Actually, uh, the thought of taking out the psychology course came in between my training sessions. Actually, so uh, when whenever I am taking training to the students, I add some some like some sort of motivation session towards the session also in that. Time. So, so they need some motivation. So they have some uh, like especially for the students. They have many, 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 many problems inside them. They don't want to talk to, they don't want to open up. They don't want to talk to anybody, like not to their parents or to the uh, teachers. So uh, during the training session, so if it is more interactive, somehow they manage to tell some of their problems to us, the trainers. So I realize that they are uh, like, they're telling their problems to us, to the trainers, so they are having some confidence with confidence in us or they are, they are trusting us to tell their problems. So if we have a counseling psychology, if I have a counseling psychology, if we have the if I have the ability to counsel them to solve their problems, it will be helpful for them. So I thought, okay, I can uh, take this uh, course counseling course and I can uh, at least help healing some of the uh, some of their problems or uh, solving some of their problems. So in between these trainings, I got this insight that I have to do this counseling course. It will be helpful to have counsel them. So today's world, uh, the youngsters are facing a lot many issues, not only financial, many issues they are facing and they are not uh, ready to share with anyone, anybody. Okay. So if you have to start all over again, uh, what would be the mistakes that you would like to avoid? Okay. Uh, as I said earlier, when I started the boutique, 
without doing any market study i did a huge initial investment so if i get a chance again i will do a detailed study about the business what which i am going to do or i am planning to do i'll be like i'll be checking all the aspects of the business and what are the possibilities of the market or what are the uh, possibilities of failures everything i'll be doing a detailed study about that great uh, uh, like uh, you are already an entrepreneur or and you have people coming to you you know to, to ask your advice about starting up something what is your advice as a you know somebody who is going to start uh, a, a business or a or a firm or whatever it may be what what would be your piece of advice same thing same thing so like uh, you have to do a detailed study about the business you are going to start and uh, uh, not only a market study so if if you have a possibility of doing a demo business without much investment that also will be advisable so if it is hotel you can run as demo for two or three days and uh, just just see the result how it will how it will be how is it, it is working out or not or you can decide what are the changes you have to make in the business or if anything to be added or you don't want to start the business this <laughs> everything you can decide within a couple of days so you do a detailed market study before you start any business and always follow the legal legalities in order to discuss you don't want to end up with the huge fines from the government sector so always adhere all the legalities in order to discuss these are the two set of advice i can give to the aspiring entrepreneurs finally when i when i come to the final question how do you define success okay success uh, according to me uh, success is a ladder you have to take each step to reach the top there is no shortcut at all so you, if you want to be successful take each step hard work hard work hard work there is no shortcut at all hard work matters thank you thank you so much sarita it was nice talking to you and i wish you all the best in your career especially uh, as a trainer i hope you can touch more people uh, even in the rural sector or wherever your heart heart feels better uh, good luck and uh, god bless you. thank, thank you. you thank you thank you ani actually it was very nice uh, you are a very good interviewer <laughs> thank you thank you so much